Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. I'm your sexy ranch and co-host Calder Nest. This episode, we're going to be chatting about some crazy cool news that dropped this week about the upcoming DC set, Time Masters. And we're going to be doing some listener questions. This is episode 491. Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks help. And so, Vasimian, I have the high ground. Instant dead and humor. Over oh, yeah. six oh, people humor. think I am funny. I'm your Captain America. That was just you in a costume. Absolute fools. Cool. Simeon will be able to edit that out, I'm sure. That's cool because it's expensive. I'm going to make your looks like that forever. Are you kidding? <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Dialage for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Use code DIAL5, D-I-A-L-5, for 5% off your Cool Stuff Inc. order. And if you want to buy directly from the source, tapping right into the maple tree of Hero Clicks itself and watching that sweet, sweet, clicky syrup, ooze out i get we're getting lost in this anyways you can go to shop.wizkids.com and just go dial h10 uh, for select hero clicks products to get 10 percent off and joining me like always in the studio is simeon what's going on sim oh yeah i used that dial h code on cool stuff i uh man normally i'll i'll shout out cool stuff because it's it's pretty dope i'm Almost at the tenth tier, which is like the highest, fifteen percent off of singles, five percent off of non singles, whatever it is, I can't remember. You have to spend a stupid amount of money, which I have because I I Ew. buy way too much of everything. I was like, Man, I love getting generics from cool stuff. Their singles prices are usually like really good. This go around, Wheels of Vengeance. I don't know if it's because it was four figures or what was going on, but like Zombies were like two fifty. They were like two forty nine. Mm. Like, they were two forty nine. Vampires two forty nine. Werewolves two forty nine. Yetis dollar forty nine. So I was like, oh, I can get the worst one for that. <laughs> um, and then I can't remember what was it like zombie. I maybe mummy was like also somewhere in there. But like there were some that were cheap. And then I got to the motorcycles, which I was like, I really want to play ten motorcycles. Whether it be like Hell Cycle, Motorcycle, whatever. I want to play 10 of those at 15 points equipped to 10 goons at 15 points for a 300-point team of just like goons riding bikes. I thought that would be is... really fun. And Gosh. Cool Stuff decided that that valuation was a hundred dollars worth of motorcycles. Mm. They were motorcycles are going for roughly eight to twelve dollars. So if you pull a motorcycle, like for all those people that are like, eh, there's, there's one less figure in my set. If you pull the uncommon motorcycle or hell cycle in your booster, that is a $10 piece right there. Uh, it's kind of nuts. Super crazy. I will say I am up to 10 motorcycles. Um, not quite up to 10 hell cycles. So that's sad for me. But I did yeah. just through sheer luck and picking up a few online did get to 10 normal motorcycles in incredible simeon jeez yeah. oh so many it is i but i do get to run my goon cycle squad which is going to be terrible but i'm going to do it what's better than a 15 point goon, figure goon a cycles. 15 point dial that you make into a 30 point figure you pay 30 points for this dial now, but instead, I mean, you get Runny Shot or uh, Hypersonic or uh, Charge. I do love the that Running Shot doesn't have, like, ESD like you would normally kind of picture it with. Um, free yeah. one movement has combat reflexes, and then the uh, Charge dial has Super Senses, which is, like, super good if you... If you have somebody that okay. like benefits from charge, it's like they also just get super since their whole dial. Uh, that is so nice. Gets passenger one, which is not like an easy to hand out thing. The last thing that gave us passenger anything was the space gem, and I mean 
Oh, Although it didn't see really? a ton of play, yeah. I mean, oh. I guess technically the cloak because it gave flight, but I guess yeah, it gives yeah. flight. But yeah, I know I know what you mean. Just like straight up passenger one versus like flight, but that's huh. It's kind of interesting. Yeah, I've I found that to be my favorite part of the uh, the motorcycle dial. I've put that on. I put it on Elsa. I put it on uh, Lilith. So yeah, there's several characters in set. Okay that benefit from it and there's definitely characters outside of the set that benefit from it that's what i like to see though that's like the best when it makes set in in set makes sense excuse me in set to have like characters equipped and riding the motorcycle like it's cool to have some good use for the motorcycle but yeah straight up charge and super senses is always had that was the click for me that i was like dang you just give this to somebody all right that's oof that's pretty stacked to me yeah. So I like it. Oh, we're right on. Is that what made you happy this week? Just wheeling, dealing, Ooh. getting some cycles, getting some. No, not really. Because revving because up your engines. How expensive the cycles were. It was. Oh sure. It's a little okay. sad. Uh, no, I went to on Saturday. Yeah, Saturday. I went to uh, my grandparents' 60th wedding anniversary, Aww. which apparently is the diamond anniversary. Um. I was asked by an in-law, will you have a 60th wedding anniversary? And I said, ha, 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 I'm 30. If I got married tomorrow, I would be 91 on my 60th wedding anniversary. And there's zero chance that I'm going to live to be 91. So, yeah, no, that's I like it's it's both an incredible achievement that they have lived as long as they have, which I, I love them both dearly. They're two of the best people I know in the world. Um, but then it's also just, you know, an incredible achievement to hit 60 years in this day and age. I mean, obviously like, I don't, I don't think my grandpa's like out on Tinder shopping around or anything, but my grandma, Gosh. she do be, she do be like making the rounds around the neighborhood, walking a lot, doing, getting her steps in. So, I mean, she could definitely be like, you know, a lady on the town if she wanted to be, but, uh, <laughs> No, it was just a uh, it was super cool seeing all of my family, um, and then also just like celebrating uh, literally double my lifetime in years of marriage, which is just like the incredible amount of people that have been created, and um, I guess like the amount of people that have been touched by their lives because like these two people yeah. for for sixty years have been married for probably at least 50 years have been like hosting Thanksgivings and Christmases. And then like, I know for at least like 30 years of my life have been hosting like those things. It was just like a, a cool kind of like retrospective. And uh, yeah, like I, it was a, a really fun time and everyone was like really happy and it was cool, but yeah, it was just a uh, very interesting and that's that was the only thing on Saturday that was like any kind of like date worthy, uh, time sensitive, interesting achievement yeah. of time. I think. Yeah. So. Yeah. But yeah, was that I, the I only mean, thing on set? Okay. I think I think so. Like in oh, worldwide, okay. I don't think there was another mm. person that worldwide. celebrated Saturday like I did. Did you do anything you, interesting you, uh, on Saturday? You may or may not believe this, uh, but Saturday was actually my birthday, uh, and I celebrated my birthday with my twin sister, who, believe it or not, it was also her birthday. That's uh, incredible. So, you know, incredible. Yeah, two people have lived 25 years at the same time, but, uh, I mean, it's not it's not quite 60, but it's the, it's up there. It's getting there. 50 ish yeah. you'll get, you'll get the collectively. diamond uh achievement like they did someday <laughs> yeah yeah we'll see um but yeah no so <laughs> thank you thank you uh i just celebrated my birthday with my family it was a great time it was a good excuse to go and hang out with everybody we're all pretty close but it's just nice to all travel and hang out so we went to a steak place called cahill's in sioux city i know we had to celebrate in sioux city that's the only 
that's the only bummer part. Sadly, that was our, our middle meeting point, I guess. But no, we went to a cool steak place. It was pretty fun. Uh, and then we went and saw some Musketeers hockey, which is always great. I can't say I fully understand the rules of hockey. It's just ice soccer with sticks, so it makes enough sense to me. Um, but you're allowed to punch each other, which is just way cooler than any other sport just for the fact that also boxing is a part of it. So that's, I mean... That's just so sick. And sure enough, they did. They were, ah, man, you can tell when they're talking smack, too, because they're just being so loud, yelling at each other, pointing at each other. You see the gums flapping, just like, blah, 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 I hate you, bro. Uh, and they just started throwing hands, and it was great. Uh, the Muskies totally got destroyed that game, though. I mean, they lost, like, five points to two, which seems like a low score. But in hockey, it's like, dang, you let... You let the opposing team get five up on you at one point, and they were they were like three points up on them by the end of the first period, and then the Musketeers over the next two barely scored two points, and then almost scored a third. We celebrated like they scored a third, uh, and then at this point the other team Fargo had four points, and I was like, "Yo, if they score a third point, we can maybe tie this bad boy up." And then not only did they say that that third point didn't count, but then they gave another point to the opposing team uh, because they missed calling it earlier or something, I guess. So it went from being like three to four potentially to being two to five. And I was just like, boys, don't even play for the last five minutes. Just pack up, go home. I don't. I mean, play your hearts out, I guess. But this sucks. Uh, but it was still a fun game to watch. It was good to hang out with everybody. Uh, exchanging gifts and all that. And actually, this this probably truly made me uh, the most happy this week. But if you recall, a few months ago, my Captain America belt buckle broke. Kind of made a big deal about it on Facebook. Kind of just really kind of get some people. It was kind of fun. Uh, but I was like, dang, that was like a gift. It was really nice. It was really cool. I like rocking the Captain America belt buckle. I guess I'll have to wear other belt buckles for a while. Uh, but my sister, uh, for our birthday, she got me a replacement, a brand new Captain America belt buckle, which is oh, yeah. pretty different. It's really sick, actually. It looks like super different. I really enjoy it, but it's still cap shield, big star. I love it. It's got some more silver accents versus the more comic look. But I was like, wow, I feel like that I'm at 100 percent power now. This is awesome. So that was like so such a great gift and makes the stocking cap I got her feel so impersonal <laughs> and bad. Yeah. Uh, Sometimes it, yeah. it just is that way. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that was like literally so dope. And then, yeah, getting to see my family is, is always super enjoyable. And uh, yeah, two five, which is crazy uh, to put the listener in a frame of reference. I started like being a part of dial H when I was 19. So, yeah. Being, being 25 is kind of crazy you have finally uh, you have finally broken past the amount of like of legal age you are now over the hump right. of like how long you've right. been on the podcast of legal age uh legal very age true being 21 21 uh, 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 and I also i hit my uh my final achievement right i want to say now that i'm 25 i can like rent a car and stuff oh or yeah something. that's like, right this is my well, I this mean, is my final the final achievements uh, AARP approaching you. Oh, <laughs> you may now join. No. Like, yeah, so that's sure. not till fifty five, which will be, gosh, at our current rate, this is four ninety one. At our current rate, that'll be episode eight forty seven. Calling it now. If we make it to eight forty seven. Calder will be talking about how cool it is that he's getting a oh, discount geez. on hotel rooms through AARP. Uh, can't wait until that day. Oof. Putting it in terms like that makes me be like, wow, it's closer than <laughs> 30 years. But okay. It's, it's really not that uh, far. Yeah, I mean, yeah not, not really. Like, wow. Listen to the numbers. Jeez. Uh, For a quick closeout uh, on that, uh, I do have a quick food corner. Ooh, okay. I've got a, a challenger enters the ring for best pretend, potentially best breakfast burrito in Omaha. Ooh. Yeah, it's Louis M's Burger Lust. 
Louis M's is a staple of Omaha. This is a like old school downtown, well, back alley kind of downtown. So this is uh, 17th and Vinton, which is not like what most people think of downtown. It's not like the big skyscraper downtown. This is like the, uh, I don't know. All I can say is it's like the old school kind of downtown where it's like Little Italy kind of adjacent, which if you're not from Omaha, you have no idea where like that area is. But uh, Louis M., the dude himself, is like just bustling around this restaurant he is probably in his late 60s and he's just like walking around checking out people's tables making sure everybody's happy and stuff and i got a i don't even know what it was called but it was like some sort of spicy beef and bean something breakfast thing where it was like what kind of eggs you want and i was like this kind of egg and they were like cool and then i got this plate I had to make my own little taco and I made burritos because that's easier to close it up on both sides. But, uh, that was really good, but they have actual like set breakfast burritos and breakfast sandwiches, but they're mostly known for their burgers. Uh, so it's like, uh, it's called Louis M's burger, burger lust is like the actual name of it, but they, they're mostly known in Omaha for their, uh, breakfast they're like a a keynote breakfast joint that's like old school, which of those kind of places we don't have a lot left in Omaha. A few of them, like we had the Leavenworth Cafe that shut down three years ago, and this is probably one of like the last remaining like 50 plus year old ones. And it was cool Man. because leaving Louis M's Burger Lust breakfast cafeteria whatever you want to call it uh as i was leaving i smelt a interesting aroma on the air and i looked around and i said this is like an interesting uh some sort of someone's burning something and it was uh louis m himself sitting out on the patio with a huge stogie in his mouth (laughs) just puffing away like some sort of mob boss with this like half inch thick cigar uh but yeah he was like going over numbers and stuff. It was, it was actually pretty funny. I was like, man, he's like, which one of my waitresses is stealing from me? I'm sure he's like a much better star. boss than that. But like, that's that's the kind of look he had to his face, where he had just like this notebook in front of him, and he was going through it and like writing, you know, old school. He it was no iPad or whatever. Oh, wow, it was just really funny. But yeah, the wow quote-unquote burrito i made myself there was excellent pretty good Uh, okay i will say the burrito that i think you would like comes uh coated in green chili sauce so you'd probably have to ask for like green chili sauce on the side so that we can maintain portability of burrito yeah of course what's the name what's the name of that one you know the name of that burrito or just i get the um, green chili sauce burrito i've written all of this down by the way listener worry not i will be eating breakfast here literally as soon as i can uh and if they open early enough i might actually just just do that before work because that so, sounds awesome let's see breakfast ole it is yeah it's just breakfast burrito so breakfast it's just, burrito. just wow. called breakfast I love burrito it. it's smothered with our own green pork chili is what like it has in parentheses uh so yeah if you just ask for like the green chili on the side i think that that's possible and uh the staff there was great uh service was great louis was just like popping in and out i saw him walk by like three times and i was like i think that's the owner because he looks kind of like the cartoon character that's on the shirts and then later i like saw him like sitting doing the literal pose that he's doing on the shirts and i was like that's the owner. <laughs> that's Louis. That's the, that's him. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, they've been around for like 50 years or uh, 40 years, something like that. It's a cool little dive bar kind of place. Um, not really. I mean, it's not a bar, but it's like this like little joint that's real small, really quaint, and uh, just really good food. Nice. Okay. I literally can't wait now. I'm wait. I'm beaming with excitement. Actually, I really can't wait to try this out. Ooh. 
<laughs> and with that, ladies and gentlemen, I got we got to talk about Hero Clicks. Otherwise, I'm just going to literally keep thinking about breakfast burritos. I literally just had dinner and now I'm starving. Okay, let's jump into some Hero Clicks news. Before we get into the really fun, spicy stuff, which I know both Simi and I are dying to talk about, let's just talk about a little uh, a little race here, Ooh, um, race. a little Grand Prix, if you would. Uh, Simeon, the Facebook for Whiskey Hero Clicks is doing a little voting Grand Prix. Now, it is it's kind of interesting. It looks like they're going through just a mix of the riders throughout the set and you vote via Facebook reaction. Uh, who is your favorite? To be fair in the first one, it does say who will be the first to cross the finish line, react to vote. I do just think they mean just vote for your favorite pretty much yeah. versus <laughs> who's the speed person who actually uh, would be the fastest. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so round one, we had the super rare Johnny Blaze Ghost Rider, the Chase Spider Knight, the super rare Phantom Rider, and then the Chase, or sorry, the super rare Blade. Who did you vote for round one? I voted for the super rare Johnny Blaze because, okay, personally, that was like my number two want from the set. Just insanely cool sculpt, insanely cool design, very good figure. And then it's like, it's the OG in my opinion, Ghost Rider. Absolutely. I'm not going to get into the pedantics that I had to get into at uh, Dragon's Lair, but that is my OG Ghost Rider, is Johnny Blaze in black. I don't care that his original suit was blue. I don't care that, like, blah, blah, blah. That's When I started right. reading comics, this was the Johnny Blaze that was in comics. This is my OG Ghost Rider. I Ghost Rider. And that's my ghost right. Yeah. I had to uh, explain yeah. this this Sunday. I had to be like, This is no, the one that I yeah. personally think this one is the original because this is the first one I saw personally. Yeah. I don't care what comics say. I don't care about your Carter Slade, blah blah blah. Yeah. Oh, that too. Yeah. If anybody goes, yo, man, who is the first Pokemon? And they hit you with, like, oh, like, oh, it's Bulbasaur. And they hit you with, like, well, actually, it's Mew or Palgia or whatever freaking Pokemon was at the dawn of time, technically. It's like, dude, shut up. We all know the one that's got 001 next to his name, and that's Bulbasaur. Be quiet. So, like, anybody that goes, well, technically, Johnny Blaze isn't the first Ghost Rider. I'm like, in literally the history of comics, yes. Yes, he was. <laughs> uh, he was the first dude to be Ghost Rider. Now that I've said that, someone will then pull up an old Western comic where <laughs> Carter Slade or somebody Slade from like, 19, 1940 oh, something. Oh, no, you've set me on fire. I'm now. some kind of Ghost Rider or some <laughs> garbage like that. So Johnny Blaze is the first Ghost Rider. If you want to be pedantic about it and go do a little push up your glasses and say, I'm um, actually feel free to ride into the show. Uh, I think that's probably just I mean, it's the pick that's winning. It's the pick that is easily crushing everybody else and i do think that's like the right call i did still vote for carter slade because i'm like gotta vote for him gotta yeah. vote for him always to be vote fair, for Cowboys. this was probably the hardest one because spider knight so very cool character concept blade obviously a fan favorite carter slade it's like how do you say no to sam elliott just yeah you know i think that you know like one last ride for that me, was so cool. It's for dinner. Literally like, so cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's also for dinner. He didn't say that in the movie, but he should have. Uh, uh, they're all very cool, but like just, yeah, personally, it's the flame trail. It's Johnny. Yeah. But it's just, I, can, I could make a very convincing argument for all of them. I think you absolutely could. And I honestly, I feel a little bad for Blade. He's taken home second with uh, just based off Facebook. 35 votes to Johnny's 122, which is tough because I feel like in almost any other matchup, Blade could take this. But just that Ghost Rider being a part of it is just a death sentence for everybody else. Because these are all, all these guys are so cool. Yeah. But that Ghost Rider is just, he's the main man. He's the, well, and if his dial was named after him. terrible, he yeah, it might like be different. Because I mean, it might be different. The very next one that we'd have, we have that same Johnny, but he's like riding 
flat right. instead of popping a wheelie. So it's like a no less cool swing sculpt and, and the dial's cool. way less cool. Yeah. So let's just jump into the second round. So we can fairly safely say they do take votes from Instagram. So I don't know what each Instagram poll is at. But we can probably safely say that that Ghost Rider wins round one. Round number two is called the Red Hot Round. Uh, and this one has the Hand Ninja generic. It has the Electra. It has the uncommon uh, Johnny Blaze Ghost Rider. And then it's got Orb. Uh, Simeon, who did you vote for? It was Orb. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I also voted for Orb. Orb's just too cool he, not to vote for. <laughs> if uh, Orb wasn't a part of this, I think the other three would be like hard to decide between. It's like Hand Ninja has a lot of cool yeah. uses. Electra. Seen somebody pull a sealed booster with Electra and Iron Fist. So Electra just has uh, precision strike and exploit. Yeah. Exploit, yeah. Dang. The whole dial. I was like, man, that's cool. That's a really good, like, Electra uh, or Daredevil, like, whichever you want to, like, pilot yeah. it with. And then, yeah, I mean, they're, they all have, like, arguments. But then when you pair it up against Orb, who's just probably the best, what is he, 45, 40? 45 points, yeah. Yeah, probably just the best 45 points in this set. Like, bar, bar I, none. I'd There's... go for Orb, man. He's so cool. He's just, like, a He's... cool, unique character with cool, unique abilities. And it's I love to see that kind fun. of stuff. Yeah. Also, yeah, shout out Jay Solomon, uh, meme of the week, using the, the wizard contemplating the orb and then just editing orbs card inside the orb <laughs> is just top. It's a top tier high quality meme. So good job, Jay. Uh, that's like Jay makes a lot of memes. And, you know, we haha react most of them, most of them. Yeah. But this one was unironically like, oh, dang, this got me. This really got me like I was. I'm busting the gut laughing at that. I was like, ah, oh, that's so good. That's so clever. Yeah. It's too bad oh, there's not like a eyebrow raise react. Because, like, that's what most of my reacts would be. It'd be like, <laughs> eyebrow. It'd be like, I don't physically laugh. So here are my eyebrows raising. But this one was a genuine, like, I looked at it and was like, eh. Good job. Yeah. Good job. Like, huh. Good yeah. job, Jay. Yeah. The third round oh and orb is killing that round by the way everybody orb is just absolutely running away with oh, it yeah the third round which came out today is currently uh tied for first which is really cool actually i like it a lot well i like it and i don't like it because the best choice isn't tied for first these two other lame choices are but anyways uh these ones are the rare daniel catch the rare moon knight the super rare headless horseman and the super rare rawhide kid Simeon, who got your vote here? On this one, I gave it to Moon Knight just because I okay. I love the sculpt. I think it's – I've never read a comic where Moon Knight was horseback, but I think it's hilarious. I think it's cool. And then, yeah, I just – I really like the dial. I think it's one of, like, my most favorite rares to pull. Uh, and, yeah, so Headless Horseman and Rawhide Kid are super rares – is that Danny Ketch also? A Danny Ketch, I believe, is I believe is a yeah. rare. I thought is I didn't think Danny Ketch got a super rare on a bike. I thought only besides Johnny, it was oh, only this Alejandra. Is, that was the yeah, super this rare. is the rare. Yeah, this is Danny, rare. This Danny is the Ketch. nineteen yeah. defense top and bottom dial Danny, okay. which is still a really cool figure. Don't get me wrong. Mechanically, I do really like him. Yeah, um, but he's just not a super rare. It's just a rare as all, well, which is kind of cool. Uh, Currently, it is, so I obviously went for Rawhide Kid. Uh, it's actually a criminal shame that Rawhide Kid only has eight votes, not even breaking <laughs> double digits, for who I really genuinely think is one of the most well-designed figures in the set. I actually think he has, like, one of the coolest dials. He's, I agree. Yeah, I love his sculpt. Like, it's actually kind of heartbreaking, but uh, I know that... Uh, your community is full of fakes. They ain't real ones. Uh, no, but like, I, it's just sad. I, I, I get the it. First pre-release, the, like the pre-release yeah. that I played in. I played that Rawhide kid, and I think that he's not necessarily like meta potential or whatever. But like the only gripes that people have is like, oh, you can outwit like his blah blah blah, and it's like he does so much damage that if you're focusing on him, one, I have wrong. I have like two hundred plus points of other stuff going on. 
But two, it's like, yeah, you could outwit his super senses, but he still has decent stats. He's still, like, a solid attacker. And then, I mean, if I really wanted to, I could, like, Galactus him or something. Uh, sure. And yeah. then it's like, yeah, what are you going to do with my super sense? Like, so now I have Spider-Man giving him the Spider-Man team ability, and he has a 50-50 super senses. And if you try and attack him, you're going to take your printed damage value. Do you want to do that, or do you want to, like, roll the dice, or do you have, like, Cosmo or something stupid? Uh, and, yeah, I don't think he's a bad figure at all, and especially in Sealed. It was, like, the few times oh. where someone was like, I guess I'm going to hit him. And it was like, I hit my super senses. That was like a 5 6 super senses. It was like, right. yeah, your Mordred the Mystic just deals himself three damage now. Uh, he, Mordred is also just a hilarious piece, goodness gracious. But yeah, like, so Rawhide Kid, uh, truly not getting the respect he deserves, but it is currently tied between Ghost Rider and Moon Knight. I do like that Moon Knight's dial, it's just not super crazy cool. But I love his sculpt. He might have like my favorite sculpt here. He's also doing something a little different. No, no um, it's, it's, it's tied between Ghost Rider and Headless Horseman. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. I thought to. Oh, Moon Knight's haha. Not wow. Yeah, not okay, the, sure. Not wow Interesting. Emoji. Yeah, Interesting. I thought for okay, sure Moon Knight Horseman would be close. Wow. Okay. Huh. Because the the current voting Moon Knight is like one third of yeah. what. Uh, Ghost Rider and Headless Horseman have, which I just find astounding, because Headless Horseman to me is like, it's cool in the we don't have this IP kind of thing. This character is cool, but what he does, it, it's it's neat and I played him, and I actually didn't mind playing him, but I still have a hard time wanting to build around him, I guess. I just... His dial is lacking a little bit yeah. for me to be like, this is the Headless Horseman. And I'm just like, it doesn't really feel like I think the mystical Headless he's, Horseman he's super rare, ghost right? of the past. He's a super rare, yeah. If he was a rare, that defense power would be insane and pulp. A little cooler, yeah. Oh, that would be. Um, but in Sealed, it is like, I was attacking him 90% of the time with the common Ra Robbie Reyes, who does like one damage, because... The one headless horseman that I faced off against, I was like, there's no one on my team that's like worth attacking that guy and taking mystics if I can't boost my damage. It's like, I had Lilith right. who was pumping out like empowers, and I was like, I could potentially hit him for, oh, what, three? Because like his whole defense thing, and I pulled zero outwits, zero perplexes. Oh. Uh, Lilith technically gets prob bottom dial, but like, I didn't have any support powers top dial for any of my characters. And so I just ignored that dude as long as I could. And it's wild how easy it is to ignore him because he's got, like, phasing top dial. So it's just, what if I don't, like, stay next to you, <laughs> you know, kind of thing. Yeah, it's just like, well, what if I just walked away from this? Well, I'll phase up to you. What if I walked away from you again? Please stop moving away from me. Ooh. Uh, but, yeah. Who are you? Uh, Hell's a boom, Carter, and... Whatever. I don't know. Uh, and so that is the Grand Prix currently uh, where it's at. We uh, we don't know a winner from round three yet. Maybe Instagram will be the tiebreaker. I guess we'll have to see. But yeah, so that's cool. It's just a fun little thing they're doing. Uh, and now into the true bread and butter of what they're, uh, of what they're coming out. They shared a video November 9th oh. last week. I thought you were going to say that. The true bread and butter. Someone at WizKids got married, and we have no That's idea you. who it is. Let's right. speculate. Yeah. Who, who could Shout it out. possibly be? Shout Let's out see. to uh, someone at WizKids who got married and then has the Batman Catwoman. Uh, they do yeah. say congratulations gonna... and best wishes to a dear member of the WizKids family who tied the knot. So it doesn't necessarily say hero clicks, but it just says just someone with WizKids yeah. who tied I'm the knot this weekend. Through, uh, the, the reacts. Um, so Anthony but it does Barnstable, say, we already have his wedding man. map. Oh, he's not married. Him. We know he's married. Scratched yeah. off. John Schreiner. Uh, potential. We'll put the, we'll put a question mark next to that one. Brian Galley. Okay. Uh, profile picture. Looks like he's already married. Just Looks guessing. Like he's married. Edison Lee. Didn't ask him. 
in all my conversations with Edison, I, well, also he's not part of WizKids, I guess. Uh, Jimmy yeah. Darwin O'Brien. I'm. I think Jimmy's been married. Pretty, but, sh- pretty sure he's married. Yeah, I don't. And then uh, let's see. He listens to this and he's like, "Come on, guys." Let's. Uh, I'm just now realizing how few WizKids employees I know. Uh, half of these people could be WizKids employees, but, um, no, Hunter no. Kovacs. Oh, I'm just kidding. I was going to say, is old. Hunter kidding. Kovacs not, there? Not. I was, I'm uh, looking for, uh, Justin Zoran, you know, ooh. the, uh, the top dog being like, top dog, top man, getting married, taking my wife out for a nice hero clicks snackathon. Or whatever is going on in this image, uh, but yeah, I do I do? Man, how do we feel about the the cupcakes wedding decor here? It looks very good. It looks very classic. Yeah, I would have liked to see them on top of the cake, the Batman Catwoman. But I understand. I understand. Yeah, there is a um, second tier, so this is first. Yeah, tier it's a little cupcake holder. Yeah, so it's like whoever this Hero Clicks employee or WizKids employee is. A little embarrassed potentially they didn't want to like top tier their batman catwoman figure hmm interesting uh i'm mostly just disappointed that dial h wasn't invited to do coverage for this wedding so i know man oh what if we could have done coverage for the wedding we've done i will say uh, all kinds of things oh yeah oh dude a little bride and groom character card that connect together come on you know you want dial yeah. h to do your wedding the How very awesome first is that team up character Ooh. card that's so good i like that uh then they kind of ask for was there ever uh did you ever use hero clicks or superheroes in your wedding and i will say this does this does bring back memories of being in the wedding party for your second place national champion uh, to the national second place to the national champion Lucas Van Holland here. Uh, being in his wedding was crazy cool because at the time we didn't know the Fantastic Four set like everything that was going to be in that first Fantastic Four set, and so there was one point where we're all sitting in the church and we're supposed to be you know still getting ready for the ceremony about to happen. Um, and Isaac or Kevin, I forget who it was, are scrolling through Facebook and somebody at WizKids starts the live stream and they show a glimpse of the Dr. Fantastic card. And if you remember at the time, we'd already seen the Franklin bystander, but we didn't know, like, oh, is he going to be under That's 150 right. points? Yeah. Can Jason Wingard make this bystander? And so we're all gathered around, like, my phone. Because, like, uh, and at that point see... in HeroClix meta, depending oh. on, yeah, Dr. Fantastic's, like, point Jason was still stuff, killing it, It yeah. could have been a, if they hadn't had specific text on him, it could have been, like, an absolute just complete shift in meta. And so, yeah, and so we're all like just around the phone looking like, oh man, what does it say? What does it say? What's his point value? And it's like, I see one, I see a one something zero. What could it be? What could it be? We're all going crazy. And it's like, it's 110 points. You guys, he's only 110 points uh, or like 100 points plus whatever for the trait. Um, and then Isaac's like, no, but the bystander has text on its card. And I'm like, oh no, what if it has special text or whatever? You know, like all this other stuff. So we're just captivated by that. And then the rest of like Lucas and Morgan's family, we're just like, what is wrong with your groomsmen right now? Is this that important? <laughs> the groom was like, actually, it is really important. So let's just calm down here. And I was like, you're darn right. It's important. This could change our next couple of months and or year in Hero Clicks. Uh, so that was a great Hero Clicks related wedding. Oh, another good part about that is. I woke up early enough, like time before Lucas's wedding, and during that time we were running our Supernova tournament. So I went live on Facebook, opened some Supernova boosters for people to see what they were going to be playing in the tournament later. And Lucas comments on that live stream, being like, "Dude, we're literally getting ready for the wedding. Where are you?" <laughs> <laughs> 
finally drive back and i was like see i was on time and he was like every almost everybody got here before you did and i was like yeah that's all right we're just still doing fine so shout out to that time that clicks was a part that's the fun story i can share for clicks and weddings but it was pretty fun so congratulations to you unknown whiz kids employee uh here's to the fun of being a newlywed and a lifetime of happiness may you hit your your diamond anniversary i suppose yeah. Apparently, like, I don't, I didn't realize there was like a whole like setup. It was like five years is paper, or no, no, one year is paper because it's paper, like a blank okay. slate. So like you're 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 like writing your story. So it's like paper. Uh, five years is wood. Don't ask me why. It's wood. I don't ask me why. Interesting. Okay. <laughs> uh, hmm. Ten years was like. Yeah, like copper or like bronze or something like that. Then like there was like okay, sure. Let's skip twenty and we'll go to like thirty years. Is this? Uh, it was like you know silver and then gold and then diamond because diamonds like the rarest. And I was like, man, if my grandparents lived to seventy, and like my uncle has to come up with something where he's like, all right, you remember a decade ago when I said diamond was the rarest? Well, turns out tanzanite is actually more rare than diamonds. I was thinking like, like, uh, like platinum, like yeah. the PlayStation trophy. Yeah, the, we got the, a platinum, the platinum trophy. Uh, yeah. yeah, they they get a call in a UAV, I think, is what it is on their their 70th anniversary. <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, it was funny just like being a uh, millennial on the wall of like that and hearing like, you know, it's like, I understand the precedence that like is trying to be set and like you know the importance that is being like established and stuff but like part of me is just like right wood more important than paper wood historically paper is yeah. more important than wood that is very but, true isn't it yeah it was like as far as like object permanence i guess wood yeah. establishes longer and then it was like diamonds the rarest substance and i was like Eh? Hang on, Ola uh, De Beers or whatever. Uh, diamond's not actually that rare. And I, yeah, I didn't get into oh. that. Start arguing with family members about how how rare diamonds technically are. That would be truly wild if you just like spent the entire time being like, well, diamonds aren't really that rare. And it's like, hey, man, we're trying to... Well, I'm just saying they're not that rare. And it's like, oh, it's we're just trying like to... like an artificial scarcity. That's what actually creates, like, yeah, they're not really... <laughs> yeah. Uh, How fun okay for my family. Oh, <laughs> uh, I'm sure they would be like, this is really cool. Uh, we love inviting you to these things. <laughs> so glad that you were accidentally added to the group chat where we did send oof, out invitations. Oof, accidentally <laughs> added. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, but now to get on to the real meat and potatoes, uh, what I'm most excited to talk about, uh, WizKids Heroclix posted four days ago, DC Heroclix Masters of Time featuring the Jurassic League next summer dinosaur emoji stop clock emoji lightning emoji and it's this video where we see it says summer and then the first year we see is 1854 3034 i want to say that glitches in there yeah. 2024 1944 um i think that's it well i just clicked on it and it just annihilated my eardrums okay uh, but I want to say those are the years we see. So for DC fans, I don't know what all those mean, but I do know 1944 is definitely World War II, which sounds like we might just be getting some, uh, you know. I almost said Howling Commandos. What are they called? Easy Company? Is that the World War II people for DC, <laughs> yeah. right? The non howling Sergeant Rock Commandos. And the Easy Company. Yeah. Uh, it's literally just one of the Ohio League commandos, um, though. So I, I like a, that. So quite that's a bit cool. 1944 um, DC stuff. Like, as far as, like, World War, War II. Wheel, Specific, the yeah, JSA, War Wheel was maybe? Part of the, Ooh, ah, the um, Justice Society of America. Yeah, they say uh, 1944, we, obviously, 2024 is summer of 2024 is the, is the release just next date. year. So, yeah, that's when so, the set's coming out. This potentially is a summer 
organized play event yeah. thing. I don't know. But yeah, it says Ooh. summer 3034 2024 1944. There is an 18 that flashes. Okay, 1854, I want to say, is like that year, which, which I have no idea what significance happens in 1854 I mean, uh, for the DC universe. Um, the Civil War? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Um, but could, uh, the, the Crimean yeah? War. Yeah. The Crimean War. Okay. Yeah. Broke out cool. against uh, Turkey, Britain, France, obviously, Russia. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there big, might be some DC old, people uh, around. Interesting that. stuff. Uh, uh, then we get to see a couple of sculpts, though, which are really cool. Uh, oh, the first one is all of these. Who I assume is just got to be Vandal Savage. He's looking at a globe, and he's stabbing it with like swords. Yeah, which yes. is it looks so dope. He literally Two looks daggers so cool. already inserted, and then he's yeah, he's like yeah. holding one in his hand. That's also so like three. He's just like, this is the area of conquer. Which, if you haven't seen uh, what what we do in the shadows, I'm 100% convinced that Nandor is based off of Vandal Savage. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's called Nandor uh-huh. the Relentless because like hmm. when he was first turned into a vampire, it was like in the 1800s and he was like this weird warlord dude. So, oh, cool. Very similar. Ooh. <laughs> that's another character that could be in this DC set. We could get Warlord. If you remember the older version of Warlord, who was horrible, we could get a new one who's not that way. Uh, Ian and I just watched this relatively new, like I think it's called DC War World or something like that, uh, on Max, which is a collection of like short little bits of just DC characters and weird situations. And it's throughout different times. And Batman is like a caveman person, but warlord is this just generic he man esque barbarian. But then out of nowhere and with no context at all, uh, him and Batman are now fighting the wizard. Okay. The the wizard, him and fighting the wizard has context, but what the wizard does has zero context at all. The wizard then just pulls out a revolver and starts shooting them and i'm like okay. okay wait a second this is like prime evil age like batman is speaking in ungas and bungas and like me and batman uh stuff like that and there's like dinosaurs riding around and then the wizard just pulls out a revolver and starts shooting them and i'm like what is happening uh but then warlord who's like the king of this one tribe or whatever is just like a barbarian guy but then he picks up the revolver and he's like shooting the wizard and i'm like this is kind of dope uh so it'd be cool to get him made uh, that's not whose next sculpt we see. Next, we see Substitute Teacher Man. Uh, I have no idea who this guy I mean, is. Also, I think some people were saying he might be... Uh, who does Rory from Doctor Who play in uh, Edge of Tomorrow? It's, it's oh, uh, um, oh, Francis Time. Uh, uh, Theodore. Rip Hunter, yeah, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah Rip, Rip Hunter. Hunter. Um, the DC fans are going to light me up for that one. Anyways, uh, I guess Rip Hunter is what people are Rip thinking Hunter? this guy is. He's definitely like, so all jokes aside, he is definitely being like, this is a timeline. Here's a split. Yeah. That's, like, you know, that's his like whole timeline. like teaching moment. So like if he's got some sort of effect where it's like gathering a team, like if it is Rip Hunter and he's doing that, that would be make a ton of sense. Um, when I first saw him, I was like, I have no idea who this is, but like the idea that he's standing in front of a chalkboard makes me think that he's like some sort of like World War Two guy, because chalkboards haven't been used since essentially World War Two. Uh, but yeah, I have I have no actual idea. But that yeah, it's the, like the weird bracers on him and like his outfit. I'm like he's definitely futuristic, but still using chalk. So. It's kind of interesting. Who knows? Even when I went to school, we had the cool smart boards, which weren't real markers, but they were like projected markers or something. They were kind of silly, and I don't know if people still use them, but it's pretty neat. Anyways, uh, but it's again, it's just a sculpt that's he's normally I'd be like, ah, the sculpt kind of sucks. He's just standing there. But then it's got this big diorama piece of a chalkboard and it's just like a really cool sculpt and it looks if awesome. That, yeah, so if that background 
sticks whatever. yeah if that's if so, that stays and it's not just him standing there holding chalk that's very right. interesting really um, cool and it'll look visually different on the we'll, board which yeah we'll see really a lot cool. of those in this set because vandal savage having like a little globe standee in front of him this guy drawing on a chalkboard and then the next person uh which i guess isn't doesn't have any like 3d elements but uh the next person is wonder woman which is like yeah so i'm going to describe this because as if i don't know what storyline she's from because i don't but it is kind of a classic diana looking wonder woman except her right arm is got like armor on it so she obviously has like a breastplate goes up into like a alternating color armor on her right arm a red shield as opposed to like her normal the mascara kind of shield what looks like olympic medals hanging from her like waistband they're like yeah these... i don't Oh, tassely things that are like gold little metal kind of things. Uh, some sort of dagger below her foot on like the terrain. She has like golden bracers on her uh, shins. And then, yeah, like this like reddish armor on her like chest. And then like the normal kind of Wonder Woman accents with like the, the head band and like the chest like gold and like the waist gold and all that stuff and then she has a sword uh but honestly i do not have a idea of where this wonder woman's from i think yeah, somebody in the comments maybe said something but uh yeah it is just very almost i almost would say like and if this was marvel i would say like oh this is like some sort of like future imperfect kind of scenario like you know sure apocalyptic kind of like future kind of thing but this could be wonder woman at any point in time depending on like when the writers were like she's around you know it very feels like gladiator very gladiator-esque to me with all the bandages and wraps and kind of the red bandage on her arm that's what this kind of reads i guess here we go it is from dark knights of steel oh no it, is, it does look very medieval. I see, like, there's a I pile of shields so. and arrows and yeah, swords and stuff. Uh, and then she's any listener, just hanging oh, out. Oh, man. Any yeah. listener that knows, I've read Dark Knights of Steel. And it's. The concept is cool. The story is maybe one of the worst comic book stories I've read in my entire life. Uh, it's so bad. But. Medieval versions of like DC characters, the Teen Titans, the Justice League, that will be cool to see. But like that storyline was literally written so horribly. So hopefully these figures are better because, again, literally one of the worst storylines I've read in like my entire life. Uh, I I mean, Wonder Woman did cool stuff in it though. So it's not like uh, Marvel 1602. Is it worse? No, that's like that's. That's not bad. That's one of the best Marvel storylines ever written. That's amazing. 1602 rocks. Like, unironically. Like, that won a ton of awards and stuff the year that came out. 1602 is amazing. Like, no, I mean, is what's truly the worst storyline? Probably Secret Empire because of the buildup and then payoff. Like, Secret Empire is horrible. But as, like, saying this is the DC Universe in medieval times, you're like, oh, is it going to be good? And they're like, no, it's actually going to be horrible. Like, Batman being just the son of Jor-El is like, oh, so you've taken away everything that makes Batman cool and that therefore would make a medieval Batman cool. And you just said, oh, he's just got Superman powers. And I'm like, that sucks. I literally hate that. That's garbage. Um, Same thing. It's like, dude, literally every issue was like, oh, you thought somebody was this way? No, they're actually they're actually this way. It's like, oh, psych, you thought uh, spoilers for the Justice League Dark Knights of Steel. You thought I was a green Martian? No, I'm actually a white Martian, and I'm Whoa. evil. And it's like, ah. Uh. Or it's like, oh, they do this twice, by the way. They do the, oh, you thought I was this person? Nope, I'm actually a white Martian. They do that, like, two books in a row twice. <laughs> like, the Supermans do some evil stuff, and you're like, whoa, what the heck? They're not acting all evil in their kingdom. Why are they being all evil in this kingdom? 
and it's just like oh they were white martians or those ones were white martians and it's like oh oh okay <laughs> you know it's just it's very weird and then it's like oh you thought this character was this no they're this and it's like okay stop if we don't need a big reveal every book because it just it feels bad after a while and i don't care uh, i would much rather just see the characters be cool um i don't know wonder woman's cool it's she's mostly on themyscira so themyscira has a alliance with the kingdom of jor-el whatever that kingdom is called and they are opposing no, actually, that's a lie. Themyscira has a alliance with the Kingdom of Storms, which is Black Lightning's kingdom. So, oh, uh, but Wonder Woman is this Wonder Woman is dating or in a relationship with Supergirl. So, if there's like a conflict where usually Themyscira is peaceful and doesn't get involved, but when the fake Supergirl like murders like black lightning's kids like it's literally horrible it's horrifying ah. um that's when that's when themyscira but it turns out they're just a She's white like, martian the entire time it's like we okay, shall I go guess. to war over my war criminal girlfriend's acts of violence yeah, basically um and so they have to like fight each other but they, it, there's a really weird pseudo final battle that happens so themyscira and then the nation of storms the kingdom of storms go against the kingdom of jor el i don't even remember if that's what it's called kingdom of el probably um which is run half by the bat family and then half by like the superman folk um but then it's just i don't know it'll it'll still be neat um I don't know how much of the set will get in there. There's quite a few characters. The Teen Titans show up. The Teen Titans are actually pretty fun characters. Um, but just the writing is truly awful. This has been such a long rant about... If I was going to guess from the sculpt line, line, this might be a chase. But then I'd also say that about like Vandal Savage and... I don't know. Like With how big these sculpts are, she's like a super rare. I don't know. Would they show off? <sighs> I, I don't know. It's dude. hard. Like, Vandal like, Savage and Rip Hunter. Vandal so... Savage having like this little. Yeah, like, he got these, these big like, diorama. Common rare. You know? I can see him holding a dagger, but like the whole like globe thing. I'm like, that's super rare plus. And then if this is Rip Hunter, if they do keep the blackboard or the, the chalkboard, not blackboard, geez. Blackboard, yeah. If they do keep the chalkboard and don't like accidentally erase it a la you know um gosh what what moriarty's like hollow deck from star trek where that just like was in the original design and then disappeared later on uh i could see that being a super rare plus but more likely like a super rare because that's what moriarty was when he had the hollow deck behind him oh sure uh that wonder woman let's see I feel like that's like super rare i don't think this is i guess it yeah, can't be a common or uncommon the only like, thing that makes me lean towards chase is like the weird base the other two have like a flat oh sure. kind of designed base I see what you mean and then she has like this weird angular one where like her actual like feet are angled different because of like the shape of the base but the specialty base does take you off. I do see what you mean there. Yeah. This could still be just like a super rare or. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm still staying super rare plus. I don't think there's any chance okay. this is a super or like a rare below. But yeah, definitely a super rare plus. I have to think about like how detailed some other rares have been. But yeah, the base, I think that's the best argument piece where it's just like, well, the base is so involved. They usually don't do that for rares. So yeah, I'd say super rare plus. Um, but the last figure they show off, which is just the freaking dopest, uh, and I has made me go from, yeah, I'm not a big DC guy. The rest of these characters seem kind of cool. The set is unique. I'm excited to like, wow, I literally cannot wait to buy as much of the set as possible. Uh, we see Batsor from the Jurassic League, um, and they already mentioned the Jurassic League in the post, but seeing Batsor, Batman, uh, Technically not a T-Rex. He's technically an Aliasaur because uh, they didn't want to make Batman a T-Rex for some right. reason, um, which kind of makes sense. But like, yeah, dude, seeing him with like the bones, the the blue and gray suit with the bones wrapped 
to his like armor to his costume uh and the utility belt of like bones and pouches and yellow fabric and like the teeth (laughs) instead of just having really cool little spiky bits for the gloves it's like teeth which is so sick uh and he's like uppercutting punching screaming i'm like this is so dope literally like Inst- oh. I, I've never read this storyline, but I hope instead of batarangs, he literally just has a pouch that's like full of bats, and he just like throws like quote unquote batarangs, and there's just like well, a bunch of hungry bats that he throws. I won't ruin it for you, uh, if or if not, that is the case. Um, <laughs> but it is really cool. Like bat sore is cool. It's like who could they possibly make from Jurassic League? Uh, who couldn't they make from Jurassic League? We have the big three, right? So we have Super Dawn, Bat Sore, and I want to say her name is also just Wonder Dawn. Even though she's a Triceratops, she oh, probably should right. have like Wonder Tops or yeah. something. Triceratops. Um, so, Wonder, yeah, yeah. No, no, Tristera no. woman doesn't work. Diana, um, and she, so she has a invisible pterodactyl that she flies on. So <laughs> if they want to somehow include that on her sculpt, that'd be so dope. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Why not? Superman's pretty basic. He's a whatever, some bald dinosaur, herbivore dinosaur who's just real buff and has got you know S on the chest, got a cape. He's simple. Uh, there is an Aquaman dinosaur who is like some type of giant crocodile. Plesiosaur a, or something. I I, yeah, I'm about That's to like disappoint the... like third grade Calder who is all about dinosaurs and knew yeah. all of them. I was uh, going to say like every time I go to a museum, okay. I'm like, oh, I absolutely I'd like nail 10 out of 10 of these. Yeah, like, I, know I totally all know these dinosaurs. dinosaurs. I totally but then, know. Like, you, you take me out of museum setting. I'm like, oh, the toothy one. Yeah, who are the are these? big head um, um flash so there's kind of like two stories happening there's like the big the trinity is having a story and then like some side members of the justice league that like don't know the trinity even exist in this world so somehow they've all been super dinosaurs for however long and they've never known each other exist so like batman fights the joker zard who is very much the uh long nailed poison spitting the fan neck dinosaur that kills Newman in Jurassic Park. Oh, He's yeah, that like dinosaur. Poison spitter uh, lady. Thing. Yeah, poison like, spitter dinosaur. He's like, oh um, good boy. And then it's like Yeah, exactly. And, yeah. Uh so that's Joker. And Joker's kind of terrifying. He like stabs Batsaur like a ton of times, like straight through the gut with these big long fingernails. Like Joker Zard it's really scary, um, and you just see that he just murders people to murder people, and Batman's trying to protect just the fleshlings, as he calls them, and he gets a Robin, and Robin isn't a dinosaur. Robin is like a cave person, which is kind of cool. It's like what Batman does, and eventually he meets up with Superman, Wonder Woman, um, and they fight. Uh, I, so, like, they lead up to a big, a big reveal, and actually, I won't spoil this story too much, because you should, unlike Dark Knights of Steel, you should actually go read this story. I highly recommend it, listener. Um, and it's only like four or five issues long. So that, they're doing something. And then the main villains are like Atrocitus as a dinosaur, Black Mana as a dinosaur, Joker, Zard. Um, and I forget. There's like a few other like well-named, I think Mongol, There's or Bizarro and Giganta. I definitely think Giganta is one of them, and then maybe Bizarro. I can't remember. Um, but those are like our main villains. I can't remember if Black Adam's in it as a, I know Shazam isn't, um, so I don't know. Oh. But they're our main villains, and they're trying to like get enough sacrifices to bring about the ultimate evil dinosaur person, who is a, such a cool reveal when you get there. You could probably imagine who it is. But anyways, um, but then there is like. The Aquaman, the Green Lantern, and the Flash dinosaur are also kind of doing their own thing. They're not truly affecting the main story that well until, like, all the way at the end they finally show up. Uh, But, like, Flash and Green Lantern are, like, best friends, and Aquaman is just struggling out in the sea. He's, like, a Megalodon or something fighting evil black man a dinosaur and then obviously green lantern oh yeah and uh reverse flash is like uh like flash is a velociraptor reverse flash is like another version of a velociraptor green lantern is one of those dinosaurs 
um, that has like the big forehead thing. Um, if you remember in Star Wars, there's that one Jedi that's like got a dinosaur head. It's that oh, yeah. head. Also, the the Dipolopotamus or something. Yeah, something. Dip- I don't know. Dipo. I think it's Diplo head, something. Head ram- uh, something. I don't know, uh, but that's Green Lantern, who is I don't know, probably Hal Jordan or Hal Jordan as a dinosaur. I don't know, um, but they're like really cool. So I hope I literally hope all of these dinosaur characters get made. If we're getting Batsaur, I hope we get all the villains. I hope we get the full Justice League. He is a two by two, which is huge. So, but he also looks really really big. So he doesn't look two by two scale. For it to be a AI like Infinity uh, Avengers Infinity type set, I hope it is. I hope we literally get like a ridiculous amount of DC two by twos, because DC's never gotten a two by two set. Um, if it is just a super booster set, like a, a Superman, Wonder Woman, a Mighty Thor, that's still solid too. If it means we get like bigger, more uh, complicated, in depth sculpts. But I honestly, I'm kind of cool going for volume on this. I do just hope we get an insane amount of DC dinosaurs uh, and just make this set like a two by two uh, XDPS or Avengers Infinity type set. Because holy smokes, I am insanely excited to add all of these to my collection. And also, man, ah, they're going to look so dope on the shelf. Like they're literally going to look so cool. All these dinosaurs. I literally can't wait. Yeah. And I don't know if we know, like we mentioned this at the top or anything, but um, it appears that the Batsaurus, whatever he is called, uh, it's a two by two base, just right. because of the the thickness of his base compared, like sculpt to thickness of base compared to the sculpt of the previous figures that we saw. It definitely seems like. He is on a much thinner base, which would lead me to believe, lead most people to believe, because like most comments have also like mentioned this. But right. it definitely seems like he's on a two by two because he's like flat on what seems to be like a very thin dial. Um, right. There's no uh, terrain under him or anything like that. Yeah. So I think it's a good chance that it's a two by two. And if this is like a summer OP kind of thing, and that's like, uh, gosh, what was the, what was the X of swords one? Um, Pogger Pog. And like oh yeah. Pogger Pog. if it, yeah, yeah. It might be that like the Jurassic league is like the, like, uh, winnables or something. I don't know if this is like the summer OP event. We don't have enough of it, like information. This could just be like a full set. And there's going to be two by twos in the set, so it could be like an AI uh, XDPS set, or it could be you know like the old uh, Pogger Pog and uh, whatever from X of Swords kind of set, where if you show up and you like win each week, you get one of these like two by twos, which would be rough because I'd hate to like I wasn't like I really wanted a Mojo and I really wanted a Pogger Pog and like the other two by well there wasn't another two by two I think I think it was just those two but either way I really wanted those two yeah and I made it to one week and then I had to trade for like the rest of them and I was like oh this sucks <laughs> this really ah. sucks trading for things that like I could have just won uh, and trading for like the entire Jurassic League would be really really rough especially since. You know, like, you probably aren't going to play them all, but who knows? Like, maybe you'll play them all, like, in, like, some sort of, like, casual kind of setting uh, or whatever. Maybe, like, they'll be, like, competitive. But it seems like the most likely option is that you'll just, like, really, really want, like, two of them. That's how it seems to normally play out. Ooh, I hope you don't need two. Like, I hope they... Okay, probably the worst thing they could do is make them all like colossal retaliators and make this the price of them absolutely insane and needing to like own like two or three versions of each member of the Jurassic League or whatever. Hopefully, like they, I mean, they shouldn't be cheap, right? They're giant dinosaurs. Like, yeah, I don't know. But uh, I would rather have them make literally every single member that was like in that Jurassic League comic. Because when, when else are we ever going to get them made? Might as well make them all. 
And you know what? If it's going to be insane to collect them all, I'd rather have the option to collect them all than have them never get made. That's true. That's my. That's what I'm. That's what. I'm, and also, if you, maybe maybe they are too many points, so you never play them on a team together. Uh, I'm cool with just looking at them all. I'm. Yeah. I will say this. I, uh, even if they're not great, if they all look cool on my shelf, and it's like Batman, Superman, Wonder. This will be like the first Superman I ever own, probably. Um, just to complete a dinosaur set because they'll just look so cool. Yeah. Mm, okay, maybe I we shouldn't get ahead of ourselves. I don't know if I can guarantee you. Rather actually. have every sculpt possible than like every dial possible. Oh, absolutely. Because, yeah, definitely. I I definitely collect like dial first instead of like sculpt or geez. I sculpt first. Oh, I collect sculpt first instead of dial first because yeah. At the end of the day, like, the dial will eventually, like, age out, and, like, there will be, like, stuff that does the same stuff, but the sculpt will always be the same thing. So, especially, like, if it's a character I really care about, or if it's just, like, very unique, and I'll get one of those, which is probably the case with these, I'll probably only ever get one Jurassic League, period. Yeah, sure. I'm definitely going to try and uh, collect as many as I can. All right, let's do it. That's that. That's DC. That's Time Masters. Uh, let us know, listener. What do you want to come out of the DC Time Masters set? What are you most excited for that we've seen so far, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. I I really can't wait. I'm, you know, there's one of the comments where it's like, is it bad that I'm more excited for this set than anything else upcoming or whatever? And I'm like, no, that's. I don't think that's bad at all. I mean, that just shows how kind of freaking cool this set is going to be you know honestly like if it sets that cool like i'm i'm super excited for this set i still can't wait for like disney plus two and i'm curious to see what like is going to be in like the weapon x deadpool set and all that but also i'm just like yo giant dinosaurs are so cool <laughs> you know i literally can't wait so it's going to be awesome i oh it's so sick oh it's so sick i will say the only bummer is that we know it's like probably not going to be a lantern heavy set that is that's got to be just probably true or it's like nah it's probably just yeah there's all almost, time traveling stuff but that's that, okay like, there's almost that's zero okay. chance in that yeah particular so aspect, limited sadly. but you know what i'll take it because uh dinosaurs are just that freaking cool all right that that's the news so unless we want to chit chat a little more about the prospect of maybe one of the coolest sets of next year i mean honestly for as far as excitement goes i'm probably most excited for this set uh for what we know is coming down the pipe next year so it's yeah. already it's already up there for best set of next year for me just that, on like I mean, subject matter the alone we know the iconics we know um we know of like the deadpool uh wolverine deadpool weapon x yeah yeah weapon deadpool weapon x um this set and then disney like next phase i think is what they call it right um, so those three next phase that I, I don't have a ton of hopes for i th i think it's really cool i love getting mcu stuff but just because of the previous like disney plus thing i don't think that we'll get you know a full MCU cast or like a full whatever, whatever it'll be like specifically things that were on Disney plus. And I don't know if you're caught up with Loki, but some wild stuff happens with Loki. Some, yeah, some pretty crazy stuff going on in like the old MCU chamber. Uh, and so, yeah, there's like a lot of stuff where it's like this design or these, this, this, set is already designed and the show just ended like season two of loki just this yeah. last like, week ended so it's like is it likely that they'll get this loki right or if they make this loki at all like will they get him in the kind of like scope that like would be interesting probably not just guess there's like guess. no way we get i mean yeah. it wasn't on the list of like things to be look on the lookout for in right. like it was next phase, it was like werewolf, and also um, this like coming out so soon. Night. Um, Guardians was Guardians on there? Guardians Christmas wasn't on there, but they're getting the full holiday set, and I'm pretty okay. sure you can pretty much make everybody from that episode 
So yeah, just that. It was where Holiday Fight Night was mentioned. Um, she Hulk obviously was like one of the big mentions. I don't remember Loki being mentioned, but like season two, I feel like season two was announced and like episodes started dropping for season two after we knew that next phase was coming. <laughs> Maybe not. But like I feel like I, season two of Loki yeah. like was only like a month ago and we knew about next phase like all the way back at World, so Yeah, we knew about it for a while. I don't which know. Is... I don't know does how not Loki bode well it. for the chances of getting Loki in it, sadly. Get, like, Hunter B-15 as a doctor. Oh, boy. You know. um, That's what I really the- wanted, was one of the worst characters from the first Disney Plus set to be also in the next one. I really wanted to be fair, the second version of Hunter B-15. Dial-wise, one of the worst characters. Right. Uh, character-wise... Not also one of the worst characters. Not the worst. Nah, I mean, not in season two. Not the two. worst. Not in season two. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, she doesn't do one, a whole like, lot in season one, it, man. Yeah, in season really one, it's like, why are we giving so much attention to this this person? Yeah. Uh, but in season two, it's like, I don't know. I kind of like this person. And then they also okay. introduce like Hunter like five and Hunter something something else. Oh, that's kind of Both neat. of which are just like absolutely like, I think it's like episode four. It's like blit blit like let's just get rid of these guys um yeah the one especially it's like we've really built him up to like be something that you give a like hoot about and then uh he gets trimmed or whatever which Uh-oh. trimming right. in like Oof. the loki tv show is not the same as death because like you know they just go to like the end of like the timeline or whatever so it's like technically that person's still alive. They're just like at the end where everything else is, but everything basically dies there. So yeah, I don't know. I haven't finished it yet. I've just seen a lot of spoilers for it, and so I'm very interested in finishing it because I want to understand said spoilers. I just want to know. Yeah, I just want to know. How many eyes did Loki give up to get the world knowledge of the? The Loki tree. That's what I want to know. Mm. Odin gave up one eye. King Thor gave up both eyes to get the rune knowledge and the something something knowledge. I don't remember. I'm sure that's worth it. Yeah. It it was because he was like, I give up both my eyes. I am Thor, king of Asgard. And they were like, all right, you gave up both your eyes, but you can still see. And Thor was like, cool. That's what I was hoping for. That's good knowledge. Literally, I can still see. no. Because giving no up, repercussions yeah, for my actions. Let's giving go. a hundred percent of my vision would be really lame. So I'm glad that uh, this tree gave me back one hundred percent of my vision. Like some sort of weird transaction. My actions don't have consequences. Yippee! Okay, Thor. Yeah, kind of lucked out, but good job. Odin just sitting uh, in like yeah, we'll see. Valhalla like, well, I remember back in my day when I gave up an eye, that eye just stayed gone, and I could only see with one eye. Yeah, I kind of got the raw end you know, of the deal. Whatever. You got both <laughs> eyes and all the rune knowledge, and the tree blessed you with a like, super super knowledge. That's crazy. I lost an eyeball. And I still don't have it. This kind of doesn't seem fair. Now, does it, son? Uh, all right. Let's go ahead and jump into some listener questions this week to round out the episode. There are dozens of us. Dozens! All our listener questions are coming from the Discord. Now you know what that means. That means Discord Patreon plug. Join the Patreon. Exclusive giveaways. Cool free hero clicks just for being a member of of the patreon if you join at the five dollar tier which is the best tier you can go ahead join the discord you can see all sorts of cool behind the scenes content videos uh pictures and stuff that we post throughout the day and weeks in discord as well as be able to chat with us pretty much whenever uh on discord which is pretty fun we also sometimes play some games with listeners play some hero hooks games or even uh do some bad samaritan where you just play some uh some fun hero host guessing games, which you can get points for, and we have a winner at the end of the year, and it's a whole blast. It's a big, it's a big fun thing. But our questions come from Alex the Enchanter. 
Uh, it's a very me-centered question. I appreciate that, Alex. He says, Calder gets his wish. Team Fortress 2 and Evil Dead are now in hero clicks. Oh, literally, I could die happy. Uh, and then he says, paw curls. Yes, this is terrible. They're in, capital I-N, they're in hero clicks, specifically Captain America. The only way for Calder to get those figures is to smash his Captain America. Characters. What do you treat as an acceptable loss? Ugh. I mean, thankfully, uh, big shout out REV for existing. We definitely. So I'm taking this as a I can never rebuy these Captain America figures either. I can't just be like, oh, I'll smash yeah, yeah, that and rebuy I think it's it. Like, right? That's kind of how I'm taking it. It disappears from existence. It's gone. Yeah. So we will be smashing the first four Captain Americas. Well, and here's another thing. These are real, like, I don't care about these pieces, right? So kind of cop-out answers, I guess. But we're smashing the first four Captain Americas from Infinity Challenge. They are literal garbage. Then we're smashing the next four Captain Americas from the Universe set, which are reprints from those. And now we almost have all nine mercenaries. Uh, and then we just kind of go through and we pick and choose some caps. Let me actually, let me just literally stand up and turn around. Uh, we smash those. Uh, yeah, I'll smash the ultimate sets, Captain America. We won't smash the rookie because he's a legacy card and that's super dope and fun. I'll I'll smash all the Chaos War Captain Americas as well. We're kind of bouncing around, hey, but those are okay. definitely okay. worth smashing. Um... I really don't want to smash any of the movie ones, even the bad movie ones. I just I'm a little too attached. Those are like the worst Captain Americas. I I would smash uh, all the Armor Wars ones, but the veteran. The veteran's too cool. I can't smash him. I would get rid of Ultimate's Captain America from the first card at Avengers set. I think that's that's enough for all nine mercenaries once, and then, like, Ash and a couple of people. Uh, there are a few other, I guess, acceptable sacrifices if I would, like, want all of, like, Blue Team or something as well for, like, 18... Oh my gosh, so many figures to destroy, though. Uh, when Alex first sent that question, I was just absolutely riddled with inner turmoil. I was like, oh my gosh. My two loves... I must destroy one of them. Ugh. I don't know who else. Maybe like I would destroy both Captain Americas from the Mighty Thor set because they're just kind of Steve with a the shield. They're not very patriotic. I'd be yeah, okay I think the, I think uh, there's enough. The cap from Nick Fury, Agents of Shield. Oh man, he's like the solid, Steve Rogers. Like... He's not Cap. He's Steve Rogers with the uh, the clear um, whatever shield, that? right? Maybe there maybe is think of Falcon the fear itself one. The, uh, I mean, oh, if we're saying non-Steve Rogers are on the chopping block, we're smashing Bucky, we're smashing Isaiah, we're smashing Sam. Uh, I'll smash the old John, too. I'll, like, get rid of all those guys. I can't, I would smash the Captain America set Bucky's. Ah, uh, you know what? I actually can't even do that. I love having the 2011 cap set as a complete set too much to smash Bucky from that. But I would... I I might for Evil Dead or TF2 Hero Clicks, but this is a good question, man. Saying that, like, in order to get your most prized dream possession, yeah. you must smash that which you already own, never to return. I, um, I could probably, yeah, I would, like flipped, I would probably smash. Sam. I could probably only get like, there'd probably only be two figures. No, nah, oh, really? There's about three. for all your Wolverines. Yeah, there's about They've three made Wolverines so that many could bad get rid of. or forgettable Wolverines. I mean, I'm just talking about like bad, forgettable Captain Americas, and I'm just like, I literally, I would smash both Captain Americas from War of the Realms. Be easy in a heartbeat. Actually, uh, they were horrible. Um, yeah, you would only smash three Wolverines. How many charge blades, non-inspiring dials, dials are I, there? It's the sculpts. I love the okay. brown. It's like the X of Swords one where he's like just brown suit Wolverine, like brown and red ish holding the Muramasa blade. That one's like perfect sculpt because it's like that's like a sculpt that I've always wanted. The uh gosh, what do you call it? The XXS one where it's like the not Street Fighter. Um 
like Marvel vs. Capcom and like Berserker Barrage, kind of like that sculpt. Obviously, like a keeper. Uh, the like the crouched Wolverine in the X Men Zero Zero One. Still love that suit. Love that kind of like sculpt. The uh, Avengers vs. X Men sculpt. Like that one. There's probably like a few Wolverines I could pick throughout the years where I'm just like, I think whichever one was in X Men Dark Phoenix Saga, the, like the single base from that one was just like meh. Super meh. Where it's just like, didn't okay. do anything interesting. Was a sculpt that we had already kind of seen. But for the most part, I think I'd like to keep almost all of them. Hmm. Fair enough. Fair enough, I guess. I think he's just had more of his alternate costumes and has had more drastic mainline alternate costumes be popular in comics and made in hero clicks than Cap has. Where I'm just like, all right, a lot of you guys are just pretty standard looking bros. Axe them, burn them, smash them. Uh, but thank you, Alex. A really cool, really creative question. I really enjoyed really enjoyed thinking about it. Um, Tyler M. asked, with the new DC set tease, what are some wild speculations you have on the roster? We kind of talked about it a little bit. Um, as far as wild stuff goes, uh, I'll, I'll say a little controversial topic. A lot of people are hoping for like the Legion of Superheroes. I literally think they're some of the most boring comics that dc has ever made i don't uh do not care to get any legion of superheroes um playing that set when it first came out and getting random yellow and blue yellow person that can fly and does whatever i'm like these are literally some of the lamest superheroes on the planet we don't need any more of these literally ever uh and you can burn me at the stake for that i don't care uh i'm not interested but i would like to see if we're doing two by twos we don't need a new war wheel, but it'd be kind of fun to get something like that if we we're doing a World War II. Uh, or like a Black Hawk jet, right? All the Black Hawks were like pilots, and they like flew jets around. So like a Black Hawk jet would be kind of cool. Yeah, Just some vehicles for World DC would probably be like the coolest thing, personally. Yeah, so I would I would take stuff like that. That'd be really cool. Uh, what, about, what about you, Simeon? What's some like wild stuff? I mean, I I went fully into like oh. yeah, I want literally everything from Jurassic the, League. So I think uh, if we go with the uh, gosh, I can't remember the exact name of it, but uh, if we go with the Legends of Tomorrow, that kind of stuff. Okay, obviously, like probably not the CW versions, but uh, like those same characters, so like Rip Hunter. Um, Carter, not Carter Slade, gosh. What's the DC Carter Slade? The angry dude cowboy with, like, the messed up face. Uh, Jonah Dex. Hex. Yes, Hex. Jonah Hex would be cool. Hex. Yeah, I was thinking Dex for some reason. Yeah, Jonah Hex. Um, obviously, like, you could do the cast that we had if you really wanted to copy that. I thought the live action, like, Vixen was cool. Um, yeah, it was pretty fun some of that kind of stuff. And then uh, I think it was like season three where they all like use their focused energy to make like uh Bixby, the giant stuffed animal. Elm oh dragon. no, please literally anything. But if that, we can get no, a please. two by two cookie monster esque <sighs> thing from the legends of tomorrow. That seems super cool. I don't think there was any fan of any comic, anything that didn't uh, dislike that. That literally did, made me like, okay, that. I'm yeah, done know. watching the show. Cool. <laughs> awesome. It was literally so awful. Ugh. That was painful. Just seeing that, and I was like, really? This is what, this is what we're doing, huh? It was pretty rough, because it was like, cool. the whole season was like, oh, we gotta stop these people from like raising the super demon, and then they do it, and they're like, Oh no, the only way to stop Super Demon is thinking pure thoughts. And it was literally just like a Care Bear that just. It was too much CGI. Yeah, it was like. It just. The premise of that show relied heavily on CGI already. And then it was like, what if we. Like the final Adley, battle is yeah. Big Gargoyle Demon versus Fuzzy Bear Happy Thought thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I never need to see that ever again. I never even need to think about that ever again. Actually, I'll be okay. Uh, a big the Adam, a big Ray Palmer Adam, 
that'd be fun you know just any any big stuff i'm down for let's especially let's after let's uh, black adam seeing like uh the atom with black oh adam, yeah like, that was a ton of fun that was yeah like, that was yeah. cool uh, a two by two with Doctor Fate having like multiple, but it's just a ton of him. It's yeah. like a multiple man Doctor Fate. That yeah. would be sick. Not like not like quite like multiple man, but like one solid Doctor Fate, and then everything else is like translucent versions of him. Would be cool. Kind of like the the Spectre three by six, where it's like all those weird. Oh, spirits. okay. Except it's like Doctor Fate, and then a bunch of like Doctor Fate, like holographic kind of versions of himself. Uh, if we're gonna stick with, you know, Black Adam, especially. right? Yeah, if we're going. If we're going with like that, the uh, the critically acclaimed DC movie of last year, Black Adam, that everyone enjoyed and everyone thought was good. Yeah, I want to see more from that. <laughs> uh. But yeah, I think there's just a lot of crazy stuff you can go off with this new DC set. I really, I can't wait to see where they take it. His own Bill, next question, asks, comic books often go on forever with no end, so it would seem. Superman, for instance, has been published continuously since 1938. The MCU, though, has actually had some of its most popular characters' careers see an end. What is a good point in actual continuity that you think would have been a good ending for one of your favorite characters in comics. You get to pick the characters. Ooh. Yeah. I, you know, controversial um, opinion. Okay, go ahead, Simeon. Go ahead, Simeon. Okay, uh, I'm just going to say off the top. The number one reason Breaking Bad is like a show that people still talk about, still watch, still enjoy, still talk, like, still hype is because Breaking Bad had a planned ending. If Breaking Bad right. had just been like, you know, some writer was like, yeah, like, here we get to, like, you know, I've got this written out to, like, season five, and then, like, the production studio got to, like, season six, and they are like, all right, like, what's next? We got to keep this going. This is, like, a great cash flow. And the writer was like, oh, uh, let me come up with stuff. That's, like, where you get to things that, like, jump the shark, where things, like, are you know, less return on investment and time and just, like, becomes kind of lame. And then eventually they just taper off. But, like, Breaking Bad specifically had a cutoff date. They had a specific story that was written for this amount of seasons. They played it out that amount of seasons, and it right. ended. They did it in a very controlled manner, and it works perfectly. It's, like, a great series because of that. Um, comic books that aren't creator owned so especially like legacy character kind of comic books never experience that so any comic book can end whenever it wants to if it's like an image or dark horse or whatever if they have it like written off like for that kind of thing when it comes to marvel and dc kind of comics that's not the case it's like yeah, I made this new character. It's really popular. Like Gwen Poole, she's really popular. She's kind of popping off. Anyhow, she's never going to appear anywhere again because she's dead. That does not happen in comics. Right, it just doesn't. Yeah. Well, like, it kind of did for her, but then they were like, nah, we want to keep using her because you sell well. And it's like, ah, cool. Never mind. Yeah. But her like original run, you could say like had a planned ending and it actually was a really good like end to her original run you know versus that is, that, now yeah, that is one comics of the few yeah. instances where like the character I see what you mean though where it's just like ah well you know character gets introduced in maybe a side story gets a run not not good or something like that um and then just keeps going or a character is just introduced right away and like when superman first came out they were never planning on stopping him until no. sales stopped actually this is a, kind of a crazy question because my little brother the other day he asked me he was like why did like i understand why captain america is in modern comics i understand how they wrote that he get frozen ice but if Spider-Man was in the 1960s, why didn't they just keep making Captain America? And I was like, well, actually, the only reason they stopped is because sales plummeted after the end of World War II. And then they tried again in the 1950s with the commie smasher, but sales weren't good. And then it just like they stopped again until they finally got footing with the Avengers. And then he was popular enough to get his own run in like almost the 70s. 
And this was him talking about in reference to like why he prefers reading manga over comic books. And that's because manga ends. It ends. actually has an so end. It yeah. The beginning, right? Yeah. It's, you, you oh, yeah, exactly. The, yeah, yeah. You read it backwards. It. You read yeah. it backwards. So you'd be like, oh, wow, this character is so powerful. Uh, I want to see them get less and less powerful over time until I found out where they started. That's exactly how uh, manga. You're, you're right. You just read it back. No, but he's like, because Shonen, but I'm like, but isn't that the same with Shonen Jump? Doesn't Shonen Jump just say, hey, we don't want to have your manga anymore. You have to end it. And he's like, yeah, but it ends versus keeps constantly being like yeah. resurrected or I mean, referenced like, again. I'm like, and he's time right. Skip is the like, same as comic books. Just like physical keep time going. Skip. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Comic books, like American so, comic books, just, just keep going for the most part. But like a time skip is a time skip, no matter what. So it's like, yeah, you, whether it be sales are bad yeah. or we forget the character exists. It's like um, 60s, or we just write a story. We're in the they're in the future. Sixties Fantastic Four, good. 70s, 80s, <laughs> 90s, Fantastic Four, eh, eh, 2000s, eh. Fantastic Four, like pretty decent, 2010s, very good, 2020s, eh, but like, sure. yeah, if you want to like Shonen Jump it from the original like good portions of uh, the writing skill to the next good portions of writing skill, it's like wow look at how these characters have developed but yeah uh so now with all of this incredible comic book whatnot discussed um is there a point you could even say where you could have ended your favorite character's comic run and been like ah yes that's a good end to their story I... Or is all this to say comics literally aren't designed that way so it's almost impossible to say where they could end and it be satisfactory. Well, so in like my like in the image comics that I read, like in Saga, there's several very main character focused people that like die off and they do not come back because like the story oh. is not that kind of story. It's it's you know, like it's Hazel's story, she's like the di the daughter of like Saga or whatever. And so like when Spoiler alert for Saga. When a character dies in Saga, they stay dead. And it's like usually like a huge loss. And the story has always been narrated from the daughter's perspective. And like it's just ever changing because like she's like, you know, slowly becoming an adult or whatever. But when a adult character dies off in that storyline, they just stay dead. And it's really, really sucky. Because most oh. of the times you really care about, like, you're really invested in this character. You're really invested in the, like, all of the characters, even the bad guys, and like, so, like, quote unquote bad guys in the story. You're, like, invested in them and they just die off and you're like, ah, that was, like, such a cool character. Um, in mainstream comics, the status quo must always be maintained, almost always. Like, we give them, like, six months where you can, like, do a huge shake-up and then, like, status quo comes back. Uh, right. Which has just been, like, always... Since since we ever started doing, like, big epic storylines where characters died and it was, like, a huge sacrifice, we always, like, status quo them back to life at some point, eventually. Uh, and so what is a good point in actual continuity that you think would have been a good ending for one of your favorite characters? Wolverine had a decent chance where he could have like bowed like so James Howlett, Logan, whatever. He had a decent chance where he could have bowed out as Wolverine and died off and they still could have kept him around, quote unquote, without being the same. And so what could have happened is they could have taken the death of Wolverine and instead of doing like a ship from the microverse injecting him with some sort of virus that he like has to use his entire healing factor to fight off, blah, blah, blah. Sure. Instead of that terrible storyline, what they could have done is just brought in one of his go-to villains – Omega Red with the carbonadium tendrils and he could have like choked Logan out with like his carbonadium tendrils as he does 
and uh, just like injected uh, like his like blood line or like, like blood vessels or whatever uh, with like some sort of like carbonadium or something. So it was like essentially like Wolverine would always be fighting the adamantium poisoning as well as like carbonadium poisoning. Eventually, he's just like constantly he's like aging twice as fast because adamantium poisoning was being held back by his healing factor carbonadium cancels out healing factors for whatever reason because it's like russian made whatever uh so it could have been something like that where he's just like slowly dying and he has to train his like predecessor because they could have really explored what does logan mean to like the marvel universe in that kind of like aspect is he a strategist is he just hey some teams are really bad at figuring things out right away, so they need a distraction to buy them time to figure things out. I've always been that distraction. I won't be here forever. I need you to like just sprint into like the robots or whatever it is all the time, always. You know, whatever it is, uh, just make like rash decisions. That's like you know the thing we need could have given him a chance to like really explore Dakin's like potential for being a good guy. Uh, obviously Laura has already become like Wolverine and done like super awesome in like that role for the most part. And so like they could have just like spotlighted that more, but instead they killed him off with literally just <sighs> it's like the worst possible is like one off characters. It was like, Oh, this is the original scientist that like was part of Weapon X, and it was like, all right, but like, not like an actual threat that he's faced before, like not like a a thing that like actually threatens Wolverine. It was just like a thing that quote unquote threatens the world because he could release more Wolverines, and then they immediately did Weapon H, and mm. they also like only kept Wolverine dead for like eight months. And it was they pretty also broad, like, not long. Yeah, they also brought, brought short. old man Logan into like main continuity as well from like Battle World, and so it was just. Like, How'd you feel about that? I wasn't a fan reading his run. I was like, okay, it's kind of cool having old man Logan here. Um, if I he was just gonna in... do his business and then yeah. be done, but then when he started doing all this other stuff, I was like, I I don't need you anymore, old man Logan. I don't yeah. want to. I liked him in Battle I World. I liked him. I liked him immediately after Battle World when they first brought him in, and then it was just like, this is just worse, worse writing for Wolverine. <laughs> it was like, yeah, this, this is Wolverine writing, but like bad. And basically like, I couldn't get a feel for the character because it just like felt all over the place. It's like this is does not match the original run of Old Man Logan. And then yeah, like they brought Wolverine back and it's just I mean he's one of those iconic characters that will just never get completely changed or completely errated to be like something different than like what he is. But it's like, man, there's there's been so many instances where they could have done a hard shift that just stuck, and they could have just kept it, and they decide not to. It's like every time sure. Xavier gets out of the chair and he's, like, walking around, and then, like, for some reason, 12 issues later, they're like, and you're back in the chair. It's like, why? Better draw him back in that wheelchair. <laughs> is there, yeah. yeah, is there any reason that he's less powerful or, like, less intimidating when he's, quote-unquote, crippled because like no like he he could just be a dude walking around and be terrifying and like intimidating in that aspect but it's like yeah but what if like he's in a floating wheelchair that also has like hidden rockets because she are technology it's like i i guess but no yeah. uh if there was going to be a good ending for wolverine it would have been yeah along the lines of what did go through like the like death of wolverine except it would have been like stuff that just mattered characters that mattered things that had already been established the problem with death of wolverine it was just trying to introduce like absolutely new concepts constantly it was sure here's the microverse attacking wolverine for some reason uh it's a ship that looks like a gun it shot him with virus that looked like a bullet uh, now he has to fight that off, and then it was just 
a long line of weirdness that just did not matter and no one cared about because that's not any part of like Wolverine's mythos. So it built up for like two years for the death of Wolverine. And then when it finally happened, it was like literally the only character in the last issue that continued to be a character afterwards was Wolverine. So yeah. Why? Why? Just terrible, terrible writing for one of like the quote unquote, like biggest events of that character's arc. Right. It's just like, uh, all the rest of you guys are actually just forgettable. So see ya. Uh, that's pretty fair. Ending it on the death of Wolverine. That makes sense. Uh, for me, obviously favorite character, Captain America. Uh, I've talked about this run, uh, a ton on the podcast. It's the 2012, 2014 Marvel. Now, uh, Rick Remder and John Romita Jr. Captain America run. Um, John Romita Jr. actually only does the first couple of issues, but anyways, uh, the Rick Remder Captain America run from 2014, I think is like the perfect way to end Steve Rogers story. Uh, we see him confront one of his most vile villains. Probably the toughest thing is he doesn't really confront Red Skull that much in it. I think, the true best cap run is probably uh, uh, him like eating, killing whatever Red Skull one last time, truly, um, and then hanging it up. So maybe like you know, Earth X has a beginning and end, which is already a great story. But anyways, I'm choosing this run. Cap goes off. He faces Arnim Zola. In that, he gets a son because Arnim Zola clones him in his DNA or whatever. So for the first time ever, Captain America has a like truly a son, uh, an adopted daughter of Jet Black, and then uh, he comes back from that world. He's Captain America. He loses uh, Sharon Carter, Agent Thirteen, to that world, and then she comes back and she's aged differently. So now she's like way older than Steve, and they're trying to find a cure or something for. Her. Um, but then near the end of that, Captain America gets uh, his like life force drained out of him by Iron Nail, and he becomes more true, not quite true to his age, because he would just die, uh, but very, very much true to his age, and he just becomes like 80-ish years old, you would probably say, around that. And so it's like, well, Captain America is finally more so his age, uh, Agent 13, Sharon Carter, not my ideal, I guess the kids would call it a ship for Captain America, but she has been his girl for the last 20 odd years or so. So I guess I'll take it fine. Uh, him and Agent 13 are now more so the same age and have more so similar shared life experience. Um, and then he sees his son Ian Zola or Ian Rogers by the end of the book. And he has a family. And then he gives up the mantle of Captain America to Sam Wilson. And I'm like, I think this is actually not only just one of the best written and well-made Captain America runs that delves into his past, uh, what he's doing as a superhero, what it means to be Captain America, especially with his battles uh, with Nuke. But just for how it ends, I think, is a good way to end an overall Captain America story. Um, it tells a very cohesive story. And then it ends with Steve being old, no longer Captain America, and then somebody else is Cap. So I like that idea. Uh, should Sam Wilson necessarily stay Captain America? Uh, not really, but the idea that the mantle can move is really cool. Um, and I did like that. So I think this is probably the best Cap run to end it. Um, there have been other really good Captain America runs since then. I really enjoyed this last one. Uh, the main artist being Carmen Consonetto are on it, and she did an amazing job with all the art, and I forget uh, who was writing, but most comic book fans actually hate the run that just ended, which is wild to me. I thought it was one of the best, um, but it doesn't end in a way to be like, this is the end of the story, right? It doesn't end in like some final thing like death or whatever. It just kind of ends with him going back to his apartment and being like, well, that happened. Now I'm going to go for a jog around Manhattan Island again is like how that run ends, which is cool. It's cool to see that community, but it doesn't have like a concrete ending for the character. So I would say something like this a little more permanent. 
this I think would be a good way to like fully end like Captain America's run as a character in comics. So, and it uh, you know, it's after. Yeah, it's after Fear Itself, which was, like, the dopest event Cap was ever in. And then it's before Secret Empire, which is, like, one of the worst events literally ever made. So, yeah, I'd say this is probably where I would end Captain America, personally. Yeah. It'd be cool yeah. to get, like, a to reach a point where Marvel and DC aren't doing, like, New 52, uh, like, post-crisis, blah, blah, blah. Right. Like, those are both, like, DC terms, but, like, Marvel's definitely done regenesis. Similar things. Like things. Yeah. It'd be cool to get to, like, a point where they were, like, cohesive enough where a writer is writing for, like, let's say Moon Knight. Like, a like slightly smaller character. Now it's, like, bigger character than it used to be. But like, let's say, like, Bendis is doing his Moon Knight run, and he's like, okay, and at the end, Moon Knight kills Count Nefaria. And he's dead. And like Marvel's just like, all right, did everyone hear that? From now on, Count Nefaria is dead. <laughs> you can bring up his son, his illegitimate like daughter. You can make like his cousin twice removed a character. But if you want to use Count Nefaria, that's X'd off the table. Moon Knight is going to kill him after this run. And uh, yeah, like it'd be really interesting to enter into that sphere and like obviously with popular characters they can't do that and to sell comics sadly books, yeah it's like really interesting to be like the big popular character is gonna die at the end of this and you're like oh no i have to read how and why and be upset until they come back six months later i remember when like my friend was telling me it was prior to the announcement of uh, Death of Wolverine, like the actual like announcement of those books coming out. And he was like, I heard they're going to kill off Wolverine. And I was like, he is currently main charactering eight books. Oh, geez. He is Wolverine and the X-Men. He has the Wolverine solo run. He had like the X-Force whatever run at the time. Another X-Men one. And then he had like a like some sort of like Wolverine and like the Avengers one. There, I was like, I I know because I'm paying for all of these throughout the month. <laughs> like, I know not, they don't all release all. on the same day, but they all release in the same month. And I know how many books he's in because I'm buying them every single month. And then like, yeah, they officially announced like the death of Wolverine, and I was like, this is annoying because he I know he's gonna be back before like too long i know you guys are pulling my legs say psych right now yeah and you know what the best thing that came out of that like death of wolverine run was what's that the stagron i don't want to cure cancer i want to turn oh. into, like that meme is entirely because uh. wolverine died that meme wouldn't exist had spider-man and the x-men not become a thing because like Wolverine and the X-Men was Wolverine as Professor Wolverine, Professor, like, Logan, whatever. When he died, he named Spider-Man, for whatever reason, Peter Parker, as, like, his successor. Right. So they were like, That's I real. guess, even though he's not a mutant, he'll teach these mutants. And, like, one of the very first outings they had was against Stagron and, um, gosh, the person that said that, uh, Sauron, Sauron and Stagron. Yeah, the two Sauron. dinosaur people. Yeah. Yeah, so, like, that was, like, one of their first outings was, like, the two dinosaurs were turning people into dinosaurs, and, yeah, that's where the that meme comes from, and no one knows, because that was a terrible book to pick up at the time. Wolverine and the X-Men was somewhat interesting, because it was, like, weird little X-Kids who don't really have powers, and then Spider-Man and the X-Men was even worse to pick up, because it was, like, well, what if these same kids uh, don't have a good teacher? And then it was like, all right, so you read it for like three issues, and luckily issue two was that one meme line that it never got better. That is such a good line, though. It's so funny. It is. <laughs> I don't want to cure cancer. I want to turn people into dinosaurs. It's such a good so villain good. line, because it's just like, uh, I accept what you're saying is the truth, but yeah, I don't care. <laughs> Like, I, I want to do the, the, the other. Oh, but uh, any side characters you can think of? Like, okay, obviously we said our two main, like, favorite characters. 
Any uh, any side ones at all that you would be like, yeah, this is like a fine end. Like not uh, um, not one of your all time faves, but like a, just a solid side character. You're like, yeah, it'd be cool. Just because I like I read it, um, Juggernaut like came to an end at one point. Obviously, there was like J two. There was like Juggernaut's kid, and then Juggernaut oh, yeah. came back. But like even after that, there's been multiple times where like Sidorak chose like a different champion or juggernaut like was indisposed permanently for like a while or like turned into like some sort of like husk of a human or something i would be sure. completely fine with that like it does not need to be kane marco that's like one of the things where it's like just like venom can like go from uh obviously from like eddie brock to like flash thompson to like blah blah blah, blah, blah. doesn't really matter there's certain characters where we like it more when like that character is like the the main one, they've been written better. Kane Marco as Juggernaut doesn't need to like survive into like the future. I could absolutely mm, be like, passed on to a new generation of somebody. Like Night Thrasher should become like the next Juggernaut. Like be empowered with like the Crimson Gem of Sidorak. It'd be so more like so much more interesting if some like low level like C level hero gotten powered with Sidorax like powers it was like D-Man was just like suddenly picked as like the herald of uh that would be actually awesome Sidorak. uh I would love that for D-Man <laughs> be so funny yeah so then D-Man can protect D-Dog oh jeez the D-Dog D-Dog what's D-Dog doing as the kids say, oh gosh. Mostly just like biting people and stuff. <laughs> like Right, true. It's like, oh uh oh dang, there's Blackheart. I know what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna bite him. <laughs> Good job, D Dog. Go bite Blackheart. That's a great idea. He's beating up Blockjaw, you should bite him. That's Go bite him. You have no powers. That's a great idea, D Dog. <laughs> uh gosh. Uh Probably a really good run that I thought ended, uh, just to throw out a DC character. Um, but Guy Gardner had, it wasn't so much a run, and trust me, he had some like really cool uh, moments as a Green Lantern. But one of the few books I picked up a couple of years ago with Guy in it, the the focus was that he just like goes off, and it's like just two issues of this book. And he fist fights uh, Arkillo, the like yellow lantern, like the big, huge yellow lantern guy. So Guy Gardner goes out of his way, finds Arkillo, and then they literally like fist fight, no rings, no nothing. And Guy Gardner like muscles through it, like through like some rage, some other stuff. Uh, he just beats, just beats Arkillo like a human being, as just tough and whatever hard-headed as Guy Gardner can just beat Arkillo. And it's really cool seeing that. And there were some flashbacks to, like, uh, his childhood and his time as a Green Lantern and all this other stuff. And I just thought that was, like, a really cool way to, like, focus on Guy's past and everything and then look at it and be like, wow, this is where he's this is where he's come from now. This is where he's gone. And now we see him as someone that's whatever. Like, it was like beating Arkillo was kind of like a a metaphor for other like parts of his life as as you saw him punch Arkillo you like got flashes of him punching somebody else and it was like really cool it was really interesting and I thought like wow that's like maybe even the perfect way to end this book because holy smoke it's really cool so that's probably yeah I'd say that's probably how I'd end like, Guy Gardner's run is like once that fight's over um, he doesn't need to you could just end it with the, and then he went on to still go be a Green Lantern, I guess. Or even better, you could probably just end it where now he goes and teaches high school football, you know, like the breakfast as clothes. one of his passions. Yeah, kind of something like that would be kind of cool. Gardner so went on to be a boxing coach for mid level welterweights. Right. <laughs> just like, but yeah, so thank you, Bill. That was a very solid question. And with that, I believe we can go ahead. We're good to wrap up the show. Oh, no, wait. There's a little something in, uh, huh. Hmm. A little something dropped in general today, Simeon. Uh -oh. It looks like on HD Realms, somebody posted oh, yeah, a yeah. free comic book day free Harley Quinn figure. Day, and she's looking uh, at, like, so kind of cool. Upside down omnibus 
DC omnibus, something like that. Um, kind of cool. Yeah. yeah. So we have yeah we have a uh, free comic book day the first Saturday in May May fourth twenty twenty four is what the date is listed as and the sculpt is Harley Quinn. I don't know what this is from. I could not even hazard a guess. But yeah, she is in a crop top, tiny shorts, long stockings, black and red outfit attire, uh, red and blue hair highlights. Yeah, and then she's one of the yeah, newer Harley Quinn designs, doing a very Deadpool esque thing where she's breaking like the fourth wall by holding up a property that she is part of. So she's holding up a DC like omnibus looking sized book. It's upside down, so she's obviously like reading it the wrong way. Like uh, she's reading it manga style instead of comic style, and uh, yeah, that's indeed. I don't know, indeed, it's cool. Yeah, I think it's cool. I like that we didn't get a free comic book day figure last year. I want to say right, so yeah, or I this year, go, I guess. Uh, so that's we did cool. go like a dry year without it. Okay, yeah, then I'm happy to see it. This will be fun. I'm gonna go to this website, uh, and then that's probably truly it. Then, uh, oh yeah, yeah, let's check out. Might as well check out the website while we're here. While we're taking a peek, comicsbeat.com. Never heard of it. Let's mm-hmm. See, no, neither have I. Oh, they've got a uh, CM Punk article. Wow, no comic websites have wwe no articles. no never literally never and we're going to see <gasps> what's up it looks like absolutely nothing um whiz kids can nice. hero clicks fate unknown an article from 2008 <laughs> mm. not very interesting <laughs> It's a little, little old for what we're looking. A little for. old, yeah. It's a little bit. Uh, <laughs> Here's a story that got lost in the server outage yesterday. Tops has announced they're shutting down their Whiz Kids. Yeah, I'm looking for this Harley Quinn, and I thought it would be like the highest up on uh, a random search for Hero Clicks, but apparently not. Oh sure. Yeah. Well, we know what the sculpt looks like. That's about it. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's got the free comic book day. Check it out. May 4th, 2024. We got Harley Quinn holding a little DC omnibus upside down. Look at her go. That'll be fun. Yeah, It's good to see that. I like the free comic book day figure. I think they should keep making it. It's a ton of fun. Yeah, gives you a reason to go into your local comic book shop. And most comic book shops either sell these for like a few bucks or it's like just a free thing to get you into the game so always interesting right. always cool but all right where is a place they can go buy some figures Ooh, ah even oh. before free comic book day well if they want to get in on the early bird holiday sale they can go to coolstuffinc.com where currently most of the chases and figures from deceased the the good old you know notorious set those are all up on sale. So you can get mm, yes. a Black Lantern Woman, Wonder Woman, or a Deceased Wonder Woman for like around 50 to 60 bucks. You can get a uh, Zod or Sanan for $40 off their normal value. You can get uh, some goons for around a solid $2, which they definitely are going up in price at some point. So getting them at a flat two dollars is much more interesting than like you know four or five dollars so yeah you can check those guys out at coolstuffing.com they have sales every day currently it is 20 percent off all played singles and 15 mm, percent off of notorious singles so that is a flat percentage off you should still be able to use code DIAL5 to get an additional 5% off of your already discounted prices. But, uh, yeah, check them out. There's legacy cards. There's goons. There's uh, random stuff if you want. I don't know, especially, like, pulp-style stuff. There's a lot of those kind of things. And there's things like... I don't think Golden Glider's ever going to be competitive, but, like, man, I really think she should be. And so I kind of want like four 
because I think oh sure you should be able to build a team around somebody who can just blades everyone that they hit and hit like everyone that's adjacent. I don't know why that's not good enough or why people aren't trying that, but that's a thing that's on sale. Everything from Notorious and then also just all played singles are 20% off. So yeah, check them out. It's a good sale going on at cool stuff. And if you use code dial five, you'll get 5% off when you purchase from them. I know I personally bought a bunch of Notorious motorcycles and uh, some vampires and werewolves and stuff. I really like the moon trait, especially after playing Man Wolf this last uh, Sunday. That was really interesting. And if you want to buy directly from the source, you can go to shop.wizkids.com and you can use code DIALH10 to save 10% off of non-pre-orders, specialty products, or iconics. So if you're buying, uh, I don't know, some Dyson token packs or some play-at-home kits, as long as they're not a pre-order item, you can use that code and save 10% off when you use it. Right on. And like always, happy trails. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks now. Ooh. <laughs> not going there. That's how it over okay, yeah, six over people somewhere. think I am funny. I'm your Captain America. That was just you in a costume. Well, the rest of this case uh, doesn't matter at all. I'm from Canada. Canada.